why don't we talk, why don't we shift gears briefly and talk about what have been, you've talked about a little bit of it already, some of the challenges of, uh, you know, opening up a business, opening up a practice of pediatric dentistry, you know, being a, a woman, especially a black woman uh, in, in, in this field. Um, and then even, you know, you've, you've, you've talked about some of the things with COVID, but yeah, why don't we talk about some of the challenges that you face? What, what would you say some of the bigger ones had been? I think that, um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, I guess, well, I'll say, you know, especially in the specifically in the specialty of pediatric dentist, dentistry, you notice that there are not very many black pediatric dentists versus women pediatric dentists. Um, when I got exposed to pediatric dentistry, you know, the person that I shadowed, in fact, when I was exposed to dentistry period, all the dentists I shadowed were white, you know, <laughs> there weren't any black ones. And I don't, you know, and then the further I went, I'm like, yeah, I wanted to do pedo. I don't want to say pedo is a very whitewashed specialty, but there are black pediatric dentists, especially being in Houston. Um, obviously, Houston's just very diverse overall. Dr. Joy Morrison's in the Heights, you know, Dr. Um, Dr. Villalo and Callis, she's in Sugarland. Um, so there are, are quite a few of us in this general area, but as in the nation as a whole, there's not very many black pediatric dentists. So it's, um, I think, especially when you're working for somebody else as an associate, um, you know, I'm short. I'm about five foot. Um, a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of days. You know, it is not uncommon to have parents be like, "Is she the doctor?" Or like, "You look really young." And sometimes it's innocent, but sometimes you also can't help to think like, "Is it like a microaggression?" And I'll tell you, anytime, you know, there has been no place that I've worked. You know, every every as an associate, every office, even where I work now part time. You know, as nice as the owner himself can be, introducing a black woman pediatric dentist to work on the child when the patients or the parents are used to Dr. Such and Such, Dr. Smith, Dr. Brown, Dr. Whoever it is, you know, who's the owner, right? And then here's this little black girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it always creates an interesting dynamic. And I think, you know, sometimes parents will say, oh, it's because you didn't introduce her. But I've had parents actually say, like, basically insult me while working on their child and say, well, you know, I knew this wasn't going to go well. I wanted Dr. Such and Such. Uh -huh. oh, wow. It's happened in multiple places that I've worked. And part of those little microaggressions are all the little things that push me to start in my own office. Because any time that your name is not on the door, there's always going to be a slight, like, oh, is she, like, the help? Or is she like, is it, you know, it's, it's like, it's this weird, like, dynamic. And I've just, I mean, even when I was in residency, there was one time that, you know, I was supposed to be working on a case in the OR and the anesthesiologist was like yelling at me. And I couldn't understand why he was yelling at me. And he's like, where's the resident that's supposed to be attending the, and I was like, I'm the resident. And he was like, oh, it was so awkward. He definitely thought that I was like the tech. Oh, I was like the cleaning. I mean, it, I mean, even though I was wearing scrubs. So it's always like, I've just had multiple experiences of people just not being nice or people just not really, you know, I mean, they'll always say, oh, it's because you look so young. And I mean, yeah, I know I look young, but even so, it's just, it's, it's, I, I definitely go into every parental expectation. I mean, even when I work now, I feel like I always have to walk in and be like, I am Dr. Abby. I am Dr. Abby. You know, like, it's like, I can't. I, get, I say that like 60 times a day, I'm tired, <laughs> you know? And I mean, even though my scrubs say that, for some people, it's not enough. And even if you say Dr. Abby, sometimes it's still not enough, you know? I mean, parents have their preferences and they've got their idealistic notions of who should be working on their child and their expectations, you know? And I think the nice thing about when it's yours is if they're walking through that door, all their conceptions or misconceptions about who should be working on their child is out the door because I am the only doc in this office so there's no concept of oh well yeah. i thought i was getting yeah. such and such today you know you saw my picture on on the website you know the person that's going to be seeing your child there this is not a corporate right. office we're not yeah. changing doctors every other second this is who you're getting and if you're not okay with that then don't schedule happily take your behind to somewhere else in jailhouse <laughs> where you can find the white doctor to treat your child i am not the one you know and <laughs> <laughs> and i will give and i will give that to say like you know Pearland, like, I think there may be one other black pediatric dentist in Pearland. Um, but for a long time, all the pediatric dentists in Pearland were, were white. 
And even in Manvo, as of right now, I think part of the reason why I also chose this location is because of the diversity. And I'll, I'll make a point of that to say, now, I'm not going to say that if you're a Black woman, you cannot own or start an office in a predominantly white area. I'm not going to say that. I am going to say that if you're going to do that, you have to be, be prepared for the microaggressions that you may have. Nobody's ever going to come out and outright and tell you, I'm not going there because she... But... I definitely notice that the the variety, and I, I'm not going to say that white people don't come to my office. I have, you know, some very, you know, beautiful, happy, nice people that have come to support the practice that are not melanated and they're very sweet and they're very progressive people and, you know, they're awesome. I mean, some of the, some of the best reviews that have been left on the practice page and on Facebook have been from non-Black people. So, I'm not going to tell you that you should go park yourself in Southwest Houston and open an office there because they all look like you. You are not going to get that from me <laughs> because I don't think that that's yeah. the right way to go. With that. Right. I think as a black woman in 2020, the best place to go is a diverse place. There has to be sprinkles of everybody, not, not just from a mental, personal perspective, but also from a business protecting yourself perspective. It's not always about clinical skill. Sometimes the people just have to like you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, and it sucks because you go to school and you put in all these years and you do all this and sometimes they just have to like you, the person. And that's what and that's what you're gonna give their money to. And nobody wants to say that and nobody wants to outwardly admit that, but it's the truth. Because when I see the variety of the people that come to my office, you know, obviously, I mean, I there are some moms that come in here, obviously, that are melanated. And I know for a fact they came here because I'm black. They're not gonna outwardly say it, but the but like the vibe they give. Have you ever have you ever had someone just or tell you that or or someone just be so happy to see you or someone a mom or someone <laughs> I've, I've had a grandmother tell me she brought her grandchild here because she was so happy that she could find a black pediatric dentist. She found me on Google and she Aww. drove out here and said, I'm going to come here. I'm bringing my kid here. I definitely awesome. have had that. I think that even the ones that don't say it, you know, there's a, always a slight insinuation of it. Um, but like I said, I'm very thankful. You know, I've got Asian kids that come to my practice. I've got lots of Hispanic kids that come to my practice. In fact, that was one of the reasons why I just hired the person that I hired because I so desperately needed a Spanish speaker. So desperately needed a Spanish speaker. I felt like there was a huge population that we're missing out on because nobody could translate in my office. Um, and, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to build a staff that reflects the diversity of the patient population that we serve. Manvo is, is, was um, originally very rural but it's becoming very diverse. And there's a lot of, you know, African-American families moving out here because of all the subdivisions that are getting built and just people in general moving out here, not just African-American, the people. Um, and, you know, once the parents have a good experience, you know, they tell their friends and they send more people over, so. You know, one thing that you mentioned about being people have to like you, that's that's amazing. I, I, heard, I can't remember exactly where, but I think I, um, heard a a lawyer for a malpractice, you know, um, medical malpractice lawyer or something. Um, maybe he was even at in pharmacy school um, say something like to that effect of how people have to like you. That people, I remember this, uh, I'm not going to forget it. People don't sue people that they like. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and so that that's very important. And I think another thing one thing that I've definitely seen with you, um, just knowing you um, and knowing that it's not, you know, a, an act or anything, you're super, you're, you're extremely bubbly, you're very cheerful, you're very easy to like, easy to love, like, you know, there's, if someone doesn't like you, there's you, probably something wrong with them, you know, that type of thing. And <laughs> even, 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 um, even I remember when you were doing the marketing for for the for the practice and for the clinic how like you would go to you know the the cheerleading you know thing and the you know mm -hmm. there's a high school game going on or like there's a pig parent teacher whatever going on and this and that and you know right, you were doing marketing and promoting that but i also feel like that's actually you like you are that person still like whereas someone like me Look, I'll tell you like it is. Like if I'm if I'm not in a good mood, I'm not you know, sugarcoating none. You're gonna see it right. I'm 
I can't hide that, you know, like, so I could probably improve on my bubbliness. <laughs> <laughs> I think it just, it comes with the field, you know, pedo, unfortunately, fortunately and unfortunately, part of what you're, I don't want to say you're selling dentistry, but part of what you're selling or you're presenting when parents and kids walk through the door is an experience. And I try to kind of insinuate that with my staff as well and implement that. Like, look, when they walk through those doors, they want somebody saying, hi, Donovan. Hi. You know, it's, it's just, it's part of what people have come to expect in a pediatric office. Right. And the kids mm-hmm. love that. They feed off of that. You know, like, oh, they know my name. Or, oh, you know, like, how did you know who I was? You know, like, they, they kids are, you know, kids are just naturally egotistical. Okay. So they, feed, <laughs> they are. So they feed off of that. And if you, you know, that's part of what is dis- distinct, distincting distinctive from every other general you know from a general office where you know the kids there's not that bubbly happy sunshine you know i've got disney plus playing in the background i've got like you know the frozen soundtrack playing from the speakers like you're creating this experience that children can relate to and you as the doctor also have to feed into that and reflect of that you know and I, i i think I've just, you know, even even on my worst day, maybe something, you know, car didn't start, something's not going right, somebody didn't pay on time, this mom, blah, blah, blah. I still have to somehow find something to be joyful about because I have to project that in my image and when I'm communicating with these parents. And like, I, can, I have to smile when I'm saying, so he has a little cavity, but we're going to fix it. You know, like, it's just, you know, it's just, it's, <laughs> I mean, a lot. I'm just like I don't even like trust and believe like I step back and I'm like I don't even know what the heck like what kind of field I'm in but that's that's how that's just part of the field you know mm-hmm. and so if you're not that kind of person naturally pedo's hard man because you're gonna feel like you're acting every day all day and it's gonna come off as kind of phony you know and I mean to some degree even when I'm not feeling well I still have to fake it but you know I think at the end of the day every parent just wants to know that you care about their child as much as they care about their child Right. And that, you know, that's, that's amazing. I mean, as you know, it's, it's, it's a, that doctor, parent, child triangle is a very interesting dynamic. And it makes me kind of look at myself like sometimes like, man, I can't be a, when I'm, when I eventually decide to become a mom, I, you know, like I've seen it from the other side. And so I kind of have to be like, okay, that's a little bit much. That's a little bit, you know, cause whew, parents can be tough, All right. you know, All right. but you know, you, you, you live and you learn, I guess. Why don't we talk a little bit about the whole, you know, the, the microaggression of being too young or being, you know, because I've kind of seen, I've, I've had to deal with that as well uh, as not just a pharmacist, but, you know, becoming a director, um, probably one of the youngest directors in the company's, hit, you know, uh, history. Mm-hmm. I had, <laughs> I've had people... <laughs> I've had someone um, in the pharmacy, right? I, I walk in the door and um, I worked in a hospital. I work in hospitals. Uh, I walked in in the morning and I saw some vendors that were there to maybe install new software on, you know, one of our TPN machines or something, right? From mm-hmm. LeBron or Baxter or something, you know, said hi to them. They were sitting right in, you know, we had a little table in the pharmacy. And I said hi to them, you know, asked where they were from, you know, whatever. And, you know, they told me that they were from whatever company. And I was like, okay, cool. You know, and they were doing X, Y, and Z. And all right, cool. And I walked on into my office. <laughs> right. And um, th- a few minutes later, one of them came in and asked me for, like, a flash drive or something. And I'm like, I don't have a flash drive. Um, um, sorry, you know. Um, long story short, I came back out. My office, you know, it says right there on my office door or just right outside my office, director of pharmacy. <laughs> um, right. This guy, for some reason, they did not think that I was the director. Even though I walked in, opened the door <laughs> with my key, <laughs> opened it, walked, sat down. I was at the computer, all this stuff. And it came out and they somehow they thought that I was IT because they had called for IT maybe right before I, I walked in or something. And. So, <laughs> and this, he's apologizing. He's like, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry." This and that. I'm like, "No, it's cool." You know, I mean, I I took it as you know, you know, just you know, whatever, you know, oversight, you know. Um, but I've seen that a lot in my in my profession, and you know, in in my in my journey, where a lot of people 
even being a pharmacist, I had a tech that I started working with when I first got into the, the hospital who was almost the same age as me. And so he mm. had an issue with the fact that- That dynamic, yes. It's, yes. And it's, uh, it sucks, you know? It's like you have those people who are like, it's almost like they're kind of like, well, we're the same age. How come you got here? I'm like, I wasn't there when you were doing whatever it was that you were doing in your 20s. Right. Like, it's not, it's not, we didn't, like, no, we didn't, right, we didn't, right, right. We didn't struggle together. Like, these board right. exams, you we weren't there. So right. I don't really, you know, I'm just like, but it happens all the time. And part of it, and it almost becomes sh a little disrespectful. Like, when I was hinting at the person who raised their voice at me in the midst of a, of a, of a parent, somebody with two kids who's my age, who I went to high school with and you know it's like you know she eventually quit I you know I try to have a meeting about it and like hey you know like that's not cool wow and she, quit. she quit so oh the amount of people that have quit on me <laughs> you know it's like I'm an entirely of like people people that I will never hire again you know right, it's just right. it's it's just you know and unfortunately I think that age thing and then the the other part is when they're also older than you and you sign their checks that's even worse and some people will say that they don't have a problem with it but the attitude that they will give you or like the, like i had somebody like <laughs> the person that was my front before would say things like you shouldn't be doing that da, da, da. and she's not saying it like, like in a oh doctor let me help you it's more of a this is not how like trying to tell me how to run the office it was just strange you know and i'm just like i and i never i don't know if that's her natural personality I mean, she was definitely older than me by far, by at least like 10 to 12 years. But I'm like, I'm the one paying you $20 an hour. And you're not even delivering $20 an hour worth of work. So, <laughs> so, like, so I'm just like, what? You know, it's just, but once again, I'm the youngin, you know, and there's that weird, and, and that's why I hate to say this, but there's a lot of HR people out there that will tell you that try to make your staff and yourself not too big of age ranges because even when people say that they don't care internally they may and it starts to come out in weird ways you know and i am never disrespectful to anybody that's ever worked for me i have yet to even fire anybody they've all just left you know i don't fire people i don't cut their hours to shoot them out i don't you know they've all just decided they can't put up with whatever it was that i was doing so <laughs> you know but that microaggression is very very real and then if even on the end of working for somebody else i've definitely been asked how old are you you know like you know it's it's you know i get asked that by staff members too because i mean some of the staff members are actually significantly younger than me um you know oh. and i would never know yeah. that until like you know they start to get to know me when they start talking to me i'm, I'm like oh they're like when's your birthday and i'm like oh i'm turning 31 this year they're like oh wow you know and then i find out that they're like 23 24 and you know they have a couple of kids and i'm like oh oh you know it's it's and you start to kind of just think to yourself i mean but you know we're all different well we all come from different walks of life and you know no judgment on that end but it's just like i think the expectations of what people think i should have or have accomplished or should be doing at age 30 and a half is kind of different from like the life that I'm actually living. Um, so I don't know, you know, I'm, it's, it's just, I, I try not to let other people's expectations of what I should be doing or if I'm to this or to that kind of get in my head um, because it, com it comes from all sides, you know. You can't, um, let, that, you can't yeah. let that jealousy you know, um, I think the, the, the one you're alluding to, the ones that are younger, and even maybe so, you know, the, the same way, the ones that are older, uh, there's, there's, there's got to be, I think it, the root is jealousy, maybe some type of envy, maybe some type of like, oh my God, what am I doing with my life? Uh, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think sometimes it, it makes people be like, oh, you know? Right. So. But, but that's, you know, that's not, that's, that's not your problem. That's not my problem. You know, like the fact that you... You know, like, and there were, I, I've gotten people that, that definitely said some things to me, you know, um, alluding that, you know, I um, just, they, they think I just got there. They think you just got there somehow. It just happened overnight. Right. You just, you just, you know, like, oh, who did this guy, you know, sleep with to become director? Mm-hmm. Or something. something you know, like, happened. Yeah. Who, like. <laughs> forget the fact that i've been in the in the field for the last 14 years like 
you know, working my tail off, you know, like, I, you know, forget the fact that I racked up 200K plus of student yeah. loans, you know, like, forget that, forget all, the, forget the fact that I sacrificed X, Y, and Z to get here. You know, you just see me here and exactly. you will see. And I think that's the biggest problem is the fact that I think, and that's why, you know, like on Facebook and stuff, like I post a lot about my practice, obviously, because I'm marketing my practice and I want people to know that we're here. I don't post a lot about, oh, I just bought this today. Oh, I just, because even if you have those things, the reality of the situation is people have this kind of limited view of who you are and what it took. A lot of people, don't, you know, what it took to get here. Like a lot of people don't know that me and my husband were long distance for multiple years all throughout residency and then when I was working outside of Austin, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we did that most people wouldn't do just so I could get to the point to be able to open the doors to this office. Um, there's a lot of sacrifices that were made that people don't see. And so I'm not going to, you know, so you get on social media and you post all those things and people think it's like, a, like you said, a snippet in time. They didn't see me when I was, you know, having my butt handed to me in dental school. And people telling me that I wasn't ever going to pass or graduate, that my work looked like shit, that da, 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 da. you know, like you didn't, you know, the, 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 the studying for board exams on the plane to a residency interview, like people don't see that stuff, you know, or like the, you know, or the, you know, the disappointment, you know, the, the frustration of looking for a location. I can't tell you how many locations were like dead ends. You know, how many leases? I was like, I can't sign this, you know? So when I, we finally open up and people think, oh, she's just this big time. No, like there were a lot of disappointments along the way and a lot of just keep pushing, keep looking, keep pushing, keep looking. And, you know, and even as it stands right now, like a lot of things that I'm still learning and still having to grow and still having to refine, you know, my practice is constantly a work in progress. There's always something that I could be doing and related to this practice, you know, as in I, 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 we could be sending claims what about this follow up on that talk to that mom we could be marketing more my staff needs training on this we need emergency training on that they need to come fix this this you know this all this stuff behind the scenes that people don't see and i think it gives them a false perception of somebody who has made it you know right so and and that's the that's the you know that's one of the other things you know um as 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 i'm kind of similar i don't usually i don't i don't really post you know, uh, one, I'm not an extravagant guy to start with. Uh, and even if I was, I probably wouldn't post some of those things on Facebook because people don't necessarily understand exactly. um, what it took, you know, to, to, to get those or to, you know, whatever, you know, to get to where you are. And that's fine. That's not their journey. You know, I was uh, right. telling one of my men, my, my, my mentees that, you know, he, he was, he was a, a technician that I hired a couple of years ago and uh, just a really good kid. And, you know, uh, the last time I was in uh, Laredo, he, we met up and I was telling him there's a lot of people even at, at, at the level that he is at, you know, that aren't willing to do what he's doing or what he's right. done to get to where, you know, they, they, they want to get to, you know, and that that's how it's always going to be, you know. Yes. Are you willing to do the work or are you not, you know? Um, and on the other side of that, you know, as far as, you know, the, the, the haters and the jealousy and the envy and all this stuff, like, and I told someone this, you know, today, earlier today, you know, you can't dim your light just, mm -hmm. just, to, just to make someone else more comfortable or because someone else is insecure about how much you're shining. Don't dim your light. You know, um, that's their problem. Let them go figure it out. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. yeah. So, hey, you might not think I belong here. It's all good. I'm still the boss. It's all good. Uh, you know, I'm still here. Like it's all. You know, no. You know, yeah. um, what does that got to do with me? <laughs> really, what's, what's it got to do with me? Or, or, you know, so. But um, why don't we switch gears? You know, and maybe maybe end on this note. But you you alluded to, and I think we saw him a little bit. Uh earlier your wonderful husband uh steven i remember when um again we go back i remember one time you called me you were in i don't know if you were in you were in school or you were in residency <laughs> at that point but it was before you met him and uh i don't know if you what bad date you had gone on or what happened but you called me one day <laughs> you were like oh i'm done with you know i'm not gonna date anyone until i finish 
maybe school or residency or whatever it was. You were like, you were not dating anyone. You're no, you don't want to have anything to do with any man, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, good. You know, you shouldn't do that. That's good. Study, focus, blah, blah, blah. You know, like, cause you're, <laughs> you're the little sis. That's what I had to tell you. <laughs> and then the next, uh, the next thing I know, you called me. The next conversation we had <laughs> was like, oh, I met this guy. <laughs> Yeah, now yeah, we're yeah. either dating or we're engaged or I don't know it was something it was and I'm like whoa wait a minute Didn't you just weren't you just telling me that you were not doing that like yeah you remember that you remember yeah, that? Oh, I definitely remember that I definitely <laughs> remember that yeah so why don't you tell why don't we talk a little bit briefly about that I think I think especially like when you're in school and you're trying to kind of like balance so many things um it's hard to find somebody who kind of understands where you're coming from. I mean, values, everything has to match. And that is so hard to find because you, you know, either like some people are not dating with proper, some people are dating just to have fun. Some people are, you know, and it's just, you know, you almost can't let your emotions get too entangled until you know that like the person has a purpose <laughs> for why they're talking to you to begin with. But yeah, I mean, I think ultimately, you know, when you find that person who is supportive, who understands what you're going through, who's there for you, who listens to you, like actually listens to you, and who makes your day just a little bit brighter and that much better, um, you know, it just makes sense. Because I wasn't, I mean, I'm just like, everybody, I, 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 I remember being just frustrated. I was like, why are people so, you know, like, you know, I, I just, I didn't like to feel like an option. And I, mm. yes, that was what it was. And I think a lot of experiences that I had up to that time kind of felt like I was an option. They didn't really feel like the person was committed to talking to me or I'm talking to this person, that person, whatever have you. And I'm like, I have too much going on to have time for this. And I think I just found the person that, you know, came in with a committed mindset, like, hey, if this is going to work, this is going to work, and I'm serious. Not, oh, well, I kind of want to figure out if I like this person more, and, you know, just all the games that I'm just like, I just didn't have the patience, you know, for. Um, so, yeah, that's how that came to be. I mean, I, I guess I just, you know, and <laughs> I think he proposed before fourth year of dental school, because we got married halfway through fourth year. So... Oh, wow. Which is, yeah, which is, I was 25, so I've been married for almost six years now, nice. yeah, almost six years, which is, you know, I guess which is one of the questions that everybody keeps asking me, when are you going to have babies? <laughs> Trust me, I get that for my mom as well, every, every couple months she just randomly brings it up, and I'm like... <laughs> Like, do you see all this stuff that I'm doing right now? Like, he's like, oh, don't worry. Just pop out the baby and just give it to me. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yes, because it's that easy. You know, I'll just, you know, baby one day, give it to you the next in-home nanny. I'm like, no, you know, it's not that easy. So, you know, um, I just... You know, I just like to take things at my own pace. I'm just, I'm not, it's, 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 I, it's the most common question that I get these days. You know, it's almost like people can't believe. And I'm just like, I mean, you know, it's just, I mean, like we may have been married for almost six years, but you know, we were long distance for a very long time. And I was hopping around the country trying to, you know, finish residency, become board certified, do this, get a job, do that. Like there's all these things that have happened and transpired in those years. And it's pretty much not until, I mean, part of, part of the motivation for starting this office was so we could finally be in the same place because the concept of, you know, when you first graduate, you know, you may not necessarily be able to get a job like in the middle of the city. And it's kind of ironic because the job that I have now, like when I work part-time, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, when I first came out of residency, it would have been perfect, you know, like middle of management, like in the middle of everything, a nice office, pays well. It's just like, it would have been like perfect. But now that I have my office, you know, and now I guess I have a couple of years under me, now with those opportunities, and I'm like, I don't even want that anymore. I'm trying to go my own office. So it's kind of like, you know, obviously it's helpful. I'm learning a lot there as well because you continue to grow. But it's kind of ironic how the better opportunities come at the time when you're like, eh, well, I want my own. <laughs> so, but, you know, at like the beginning, you know, I was just trying to get my foot under me, 
figure out what I wanted to do, what, where we were going to be long term. Um, so we didn't even buy a house until just a couple months ago because I was like, well, I'm not going to buy a house until I know what the practice is going to be. So I can't really commit location wise because I had a goal of like, I don't want to be commuting minutes and hours to get to my practice because if a patient has an emergency, if anything happens, I need to be there like stop. So, I mean, thankfully now we live like eight minutes from the office. So that's why I'm able to like come out here on a Sunday and be like, I need to work on billing. Da, 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 da. Work on it for a couple hours, go home. Maybe do the same thing tomorrow after work, you know. Um, the convenience of life. Because, you know, it's not just about money, money, money. My life also has to be, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be 30 years old with all this energy forever. You know, I want to continue practicing as long as I want to, but I'm not always going to have this level of like energy, you know. So I can't, I have to build something that will allow me that flexibility for a long time and also allow me to be in the same place as my husband because I couldn't be in a long distance marriage forever you know and so there's all these little sacrifices that I have to make at the beginning just so I can hopefully be able to build something kind of similar to this and get it going so but no I mean I don't know find, 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 finding finding a spouse is it's hard it's hard and I think I think there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of um you know, it's easy for me to say now being on the other side, but, you know, I, I definitely did not enjoy the dating scene. I just felt like it was just a bunch of mess. I, there's a lot of ego and a lot of it, unfounded expectations. There's a lot of dishonesty and a lot of just, I don't want to say it's, I don't want to say it's all negative, but I didn't have the best of experiences. So, I mean, and, yeah. I, and, I'm, and I'm more of a sensitive person. You know, I wasn't, I don't think I was ever talking to multiple guys at the same time. Like, I just, I don't know how to play those games. And I feel like if you don't know how to play those games, it's not going to go well for you in the general millennial dating sense. Um, so I'm just kind of tend to be like, okay, straight to the point. Like, are you interested? Are you not? Are you trying to get married? Like, what are your goals? You know? um and kind of take it from there like do we have the same values how do you want to live life what are your thoughts regarding that um and i mean those were the the biggest things that mattered to me because like you said i mean i'm a relatively simple person as well i'm not like i like financial security but i'm not out here trying to have like a range i mean if i do that's great but like you know not, <laughs> you know it's like i'm not i like i'm not gonna lie and say i don't like nice things you know i do like nice things but i'm not like you're not gonna see me carrying like a Hermes or something outside, you know. Like it's just there's there's, there's a there's a there's a range there, you know what I'm saying? There's like you like nice things, but I'm not like you know like I don't want to. I mean I'm I don't want to have to beg for bread, but I'm also not like if you don't make half a million dollars a year, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna marry you. Like I'm not. There's a huge range there, you know what I'm right, saying? Because right. at a certain level, like yeah, student debt sucks. It all sucks. Like debt sucks. But when you God willing, get past that point. Like I look at, you know, like my boss who I work for, part time, and you get to the point where you're so established and you're doing so well. The money isn't where the money isn't even a concern. It starts to be more about peace than money. Like there comes a point where there's so much money <laughs> that you're just like, or the money is, or at least the money that's there, you know, it's there and it's accumulating interest, and you're not, you're not going to beg for bread, right? And you get to that point, and it's just like, okay, well what else you know like it's just you want that peace and you know that person that you can come home to and laugh with and like you know be like oh i'm like ah today sucked you know and they'll be like yes it sucked you know and they'll be like i got you your favorite smoothie you know like because it sucked you know <laughs> like it's just but if you don't find the right person or person with similar values that's not how your marriage is gonna be like right so i don't right. you know like i you know i mean i i enjoy you know, having a good friend, like a couple of Saturdays ago, he went and marketed for the office because I was working at another office and there was like a community service event and he went there in representation of the office for me, you know, uh, so, uh, you know, I trust him to do those things and I probably wouldn't have opened this office without his support um, because, you know, there's just, it, there's just so much that goes into it and I needed a man who would be flexible enough and understanding enough of my crazy self, so... <laughs> So. You know, shout out to Steven, you know, um, I don't really know, I, I don't know Steven personally, but, you know, shout out to him just from um, really not even, we don't, we don't necessarily talk about him, you know, I think that's the last time that we talked about him was when you told me that you, right. you were seeing someone 
but it takes a it takes a, a it takes a certain caliber caliber of man to you know to not to, to not be intimidated by 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 a woman like you to not be a woman that's 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 so driven and so kind of out there you know there's some men that that's a, that's a, that's much for them you know there's some men that you know I mean, they'd rather you have to have those here's the thing you have to have those those discussions before you know you start talking about like oh do you want to be with this person forever because like if you expect me to be a you stay at home wife and i'm like not really you know, like, it's not gonna, <laughs> like, it's not, this ain't gonna work, like, you know, like, if you say, but for some people, that's their ideal, right? Right, right So, right, right. like, not, not knocking anybody's ideas of what the, you know, of what their perfect life, home, life at home would be, some people want the stay-at-home wife, you know, some people don't want that, some women want to stay at home, some women don't want that, you know, so you kind of have to be honest with yourself in a way as to, like, what, would make it's, you it's happy. not even so much you know the wanting a stay-at-home wife or, or not that, that could be a small aspect of it but there are men that that you know um that in, that intimidates them or you know a woman like you would you know it's like that's a lot like they need to be the ones that you know are x y and z you know in the relationship they need to be you know what i mean like i've i've um they did, you know, very, you know, women that are successful, that are doing great, you know, things in their careers and whatnot. So I had one tell me that, you know, she had a guy tell her uh, to to either stop working or, you know, she wanted, <laughs> wanted her to stay at home, you know, that, you know, and it's like, this is someone that's already doing so great. Like, why would you want to, you know, derail that in a way? But there, there are men that can't handle that. You know, they're, they're, you know, whatever, whether it's the ego, whether it's, you know, whatsoever it is, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but, you know, so that's that's kind of a, where what I wanted to point out with that because yeah. it's not for everyone. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, and I, I think society also kind of makes it that way too. You know, especially I mean, in our Nigerian culture. Yes, you know, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, times are changing, they have changed, and at the end of the day, the way I see it is, everybody has to be happy in their particular career path, and you bring that happiness to that relationship, right? Like, we don't necessarily have to be in the same field, but if you feel like you're flourishing, and you are successful in your field, and you're happy with what you've accomplished, you're going to bring that positivity to me, and it's, you know, and it's, 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 it's going to create general happiness and success in the relationship period but if you feel like you're competing with me there's going to be issues there because there's no you know there's there's because every field has its challenges every field you know as much i mean there are some days i wish i could work from home you know i'm like but that that's never going to be a possibility for me you know so i just you know i i don't i don't see the competitive nature i mean there's benefits to being married to somebody who works for a large organization like St. Luke's, you know, there's better insurance, there's, you know, there's, th there's things that we can do together that would be very difficult for me to do individually as a business owner, um, simply because of the system in which we live in. So, I don't know, I feel like everybody has that, you know, the, the, the benefits that come with it. I mean, I've seen women, talk less of women in relationships, you know, even like the place that I used to work where, you know, I thought I'd be for a long time. The owner, the primary owner, was the was the dentist, and the husband stayed at home and homeschooled the kids. And he had, you know, a career before. I'm not quite sure what it was, but he was working before. But when they opened the practice, it became so, and the practice grew and grew and grew. And then they decided they wanted to have kids, and it was just like it was becoming so overwhelming that one person had to say, okay we got to figure out this is how this is going to work for our lifestyle because right now you're working i have kids you're you know who's who's like i'm focused on practice it was just getting to be chaos you know and it was just like so somebody had to step back and be like okay what makes financial sense for our family that we can still be able to easily accomplish all the goals that we want yet still have a home life you know and it just so happened that it was the women who was the back who was the well, primary practice owners and the one who's operating you know so it you know whereas the partner that's there you know 
the husband is the dentist and the wife stays at home with the kids. So it's I've seen it all kinds of ways. Granted, DC for not Nigerian, so I don't, you know, oh, all there's all that cultural dynamic that goes into these are not Nigerian. But you know, sometimes in order to accomplish the end goal, that's what it takes. And somebody in the relationship has to have some level of flexibility, especially when you bring kids in. Like it's not, I'm not, you know, I'm not a, I mean, like it's nice to be like a power couple, but somebody in the power couple has to be able to like, at, at least take, even if it's just for like a year or two, even if it's just for a short period of time, have to be able to step back a little bit to keep the family unit kind of going together. I'm not saying that you have to sacrifice your career for forever I mean, or whatever, but there has to be some flexibility built in because kids, be, I mean, I see with my employees, you know, one employee was driving to work, the three-year-old daughter started throwing up in the back, in the back seat on the way to daycare. Like, what you gonna do about that? Like, stuff like that happens, you know? And whose career is most amenable to like saying, okay, like, I'm not, I can't cancel 20 patients on the schedule. You know, like, who's gonna, who, 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 fit, who, who's gonna be able to say, okay, we gotta take care of you, you know, little Tommy or whatever, little Brianne to get, who, there has to be, you know, so I think that's also part of the reason why I don't have kids is <laughs> because we have to figure out, like, personally, me, we are kind of like in a growing phase and we kind of have to figure out, okay, if this happens, who can easily kind of pivot a little bit, you know, and accommodate for life surprises. Um, if I had kids right now, could I make it work? I can make anything work. I mean, you know, it's life. <laughs> what about the cure you makes you stronger but do i think there are better times than others maybe some people say oh there's you know there's never going to be a perfect time true but there are some times that are more stressful than others my dear so <laughs> you know like i but but when i was in residency the woman to the left of me and the woman to the right of me both had kids in, in our residency program you know so people do do it you know so those kids are now like what three years old four years old now at this point three um but it can be done it's just all like your temperament, temperament level and i guess what are you willing to pivot on and sacrifice i guess is the best way to say it but yeah you know it is what that, it is that's, that's awesome that's awesome um why don't we close out on if there's anything you could you would want to leave our listeners with you know maybe somebody a young a young woman listening to us or that that's that has the same type of goals that's also is driven that you know but maybe just doesn't see you know as clearly the path that you saw you know and or maybe they do see it, but they're going through challenges and struggles or whatnot what would be maybe one thing that you want to leave uh our audience with if there's anything i could have told myself i remember late nights in ut in the medical center finding random libraries to study in and you know maybe like feeling depressed or just like really overwhelmed and like i don't know if i'm gonna you know if what this future that i'm working towards is gonna happen i just trying to get through this board exam trying to get through this practical and if i could have told myself then what i know now would have been like keep going just keep going just keep going you know, it feels, it may feel like you're not getting, you're not making progress, but I, I promise you, you are. Just keep going, you know, because nobody, everybody, you know, everybody just remembers where they are now. You know, it's like nobody ever remembers what it was, what it took, the pain <laughs> that it took right. to get there. If you could talk to yourself 10 years ago, it's always like, you know, you think about who you were 10 years ago and you're like, man, if, if only I knew like 10 years ago, I did not know that I'd be sitting in my office member with pediatric dentistry having a discussion with you about what it took to get. Like, I didn't even know I was going to open an office 10 years ago. I, right. I, didn't, I didn't know I was going to open an office five years ago. You know? Wow. So, you know, you just, you just keep going and you take life and, you know, be flexible and be willing to pivot as needed, you know? And you just, just push through. So it'll happen. It'll, it'll work out. It'll work out. It'll work out. Yeah. It has no choice but to work out. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> you know? That's awesome. That's absolutely, you know, awesome because if I think back and I could say, you know, something to myself at that point 10 years ago going, you know, struggling, um, 
through pharmacy school or yeah. being told by advisors that you wouldn't make it and you know um yeah just keep going you know that that's definitely a great 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 advice because um like you say a lot of times when you're in that mind mind frame and even some maybe you can even say that now you know when you're in that Mm -hmm. you know, just grind oh grind, trust me grind. every day and you know I, I i will say this you know like i kind of hinted at the fact that you know my office is open part-time three days a week right now and i still work at a, another office that's very established has been open for 10 years and i always tell my husband i'm like you know it's an interesting perspective because right now i'm an employee i'm an employer and an employee um and the nice part about it is getting to see both sides and I have a lot of respect for my boss, even though he's, you know, he knows he's not doing it. We're kind of more like colleagues now, but because now that I have my own and I see what goes on on the back end to keep the machine going, there's a level of respect that you have for somebody who can keep something going that sees like 70, 80 patients a day. And it's also motivating and inspiring because you have to, you look at it and you're like, man, it took nine, 10 years to get here, but look at it now. 10 years ago when he opened, he probably, you know, I mean, at one point he had told me, he's like, you know how much money I lost the first year that I was open because I hired so many bad people and I didn't know this and I didn't know that. And you kind of step back and you think to yourself, wait, I mean, I'm sure even he is like, look, sometimes steps back and it's like, wow, look at everything that's, you know, happened in 10 years. And it's kind of, it's a nice reflectory moment for me because I'm where he was 10 years ago, you know, and be able to see like, this is what the future could be like, you know? And right. you just have to keep at it, you know? You can't get frustrated because, okay, one bill didn't get paid or one parent didn't do this or we, we got a claim denial and, you know, two years from now, three years from now, there'll be different situations and different struggles. Happiest right. struggles, but different struggles, you know? So right. it's, it's, it's I, I, I really am, as much as I work a lot and it can be very exhausting, I do appreciate the journey and I appreciate the phase that I'm in because I get to see life from perspectives an associate and an owner and i get to see the progression of my office but also see the benefits of an established one and kind of be able to see what i'm building it's like it's like you're at the beginning but you see the end point because you're able to like work in an environment that has that has what you want you know and you're like i mean like this office has all the all the gadgets in the world they have all the gadgets they got the fifty thousand dollar lasers and the this and the that and you know you're just like one day you know <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> like one day you know uh, but it's it's nice because you get to see you know i don't want to say the end goal but essentially yeah the end goal right. you know and it, it lets you kind of have that enjoy the journey don't be so fixated on, oh, I'm not there yet. And, you know, these days I'm not so fixated on, I'm not there yet. As long as there's growth and we're getting patients and people are coming and they're sending your friends, I'm happy. I'm not so fixed. And, we're, you know, we're breaking even, all the bills are paid because I know that it's only a matter of time. I think when I first opened, there was a lot of anxiety of, are people even going to come? And I think that's one of the biggest fears, especially in dentistry, of what stops people from opening an office. It's you get this kind of like fear of like, is anybody even going to support me? Do people care? Right. Are they going to come? And when you kind of start getting over that hurdle, it starts to, it gets better. It gets better. And then you're like, okay, it's not just so much are people going to come. It's they're going to come. Are you prepared? Do we have the systems? You know, are we, are we, are we refining our, you know, the way we treat processes. patients, the way we run, our processes and the way we run the practice in a way that it's efficient? in a way that we get out of here on time in a way that people are happy with the treatment that they receive you know and it becomes less of panic are people going to come you know so that's really good that's really good they're going to come it's just are you ready right that's really good no this has been amazing absolutely amazing um, um i'm extremely you know extremely proud of where you are um extremely proud to have been a bit of a part of that, you know, um, journey, you know, uh, steps of the way, <laughs> you know, just kind of, right. you know, not, 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 not one of those lurkers on Facebook, but you know, <laughs> they're just seeing uh, people, you know, like you, you knew me before, not the, uh, I mean, yeah, you nah, tell nah. me, come to my office. I'm like, no, it's not, nah, it's nah, not nah, always nah. been like that. So uh, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're definitely, you know, you're, you're, you're still like a little sister to me. Definitely. 
I'm proud of your progress, your growth, your, you're now married, you're a, you're a big girl, you're, you know, a big woman, <laughs> big dentist, big business owner, all this stuff. And I, I couldn't be prouder of you. I can't wait till I'm bringing my kids to you to, to, oh. to fix their cavities and whatnot. You know, <laughs> you'll have your kids running around the office somewhere, you know. <laughs> One day, one day. So yeah, so that, that's the next level. Uh, but yeah. until then, um, we'll, we'll keep striving. Absolutely. Same yeah. to you. Same to you. Uh, but. Thank, but yeah, no. Thank you so much for taking the time. It's it's been an absolute pleasure and an honor. Again, I'm uh, for for those that are are not you know aware. We didn't really. We've mentioned the name of the practice a, a, maybe a little slightly, but for those who maybe didn't catch it. Abby is the owner, founder, <laughs> and uh, practicing dentist of Manville Pediatric Dentistry. It's yes, it's here in a suburb of Houston called Manville, and she is the only pediatric dentist in that region. Um, keep doing. Um, she opened up maybe in November, right? Yes, November, November twenty fifth, twenty nineteen. Awesome. So you're coming up on your one year anniversary in the next, you know, maybe three months. Or so. so that's amazing. That's amazing. Congrats to you. Congrats to Steven. Uh, my regards thank to you. him. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to just, you know, uh, spend some, you know, share, share some of your journey with us. Um, I know you're at the office and you're, you're working, you know, on a, even on a Sunday. <laughs> uh, but being able to, to to still take the time i definitely appreciate it uh, absolutely absolutely no problem but, no uh, problem it was my pleasure it was fun i like reflecting and talking it was a, it was a nice <laughs> chat it, has, like it, is, it is it is it is we you know we 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 chat all the time you know on facebook yeah. and texting and mm -hmm. whatnot but this was good this was definitely good but uh thank you for uh for for coming on and uh for our audience we'll definitely see you next time thanks for tuning in